Well, good day again, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, as you might know if you've been following this series for a while, is I inherited this Royal Tin from my Aunt Pat, who passed away early this year in 2021. I've gone through the process of trying to optimize the imprint by matching this particular machine with a particular composition of typewriter ribbon that'll give the best quality imprint. Well, it doesn't take much thinking to arrive at the conclusion that if you have typing machines, writing machines that rely upon ink on paper as their output medium, that the quality of that imprint is really important to how you get along with that typewriter. Uh, typewriters that just make faint impressions are just not very satisfying to the writer. That's true, of course, with me as well, and that's one of the good reasons why I'm trying to optimize the imprint on this Royal Ten. This was something that I had first discovered when I was trying to optimize the imprint on my Royal KMM and my Groma Calibri, and I discovered that the Groma likes a cotton ribbon and the KMM likes a nylon ribbon. So those two typewriters, their imprints are pretty well optimal right now, and I'm happy with it. And Pat's typewriter, I had put a nylon ribbon in it. It was just a little bit too light or faint of an imprint. Uh, more recently, uh, I put a cotton ribbon in this typewriter, and the imprint, though not as messy as the KMMs with a, a cotton ribbon, it's a little bit too messy for my taste. The letters are just a little sloppy and everything. So um, I've ordered a silk ribbon from Lanny Horowitz from Ribbons Unlimited. Got uh, those in the other day. So I thought it would be kind of fun to try replacing this cotton ribbon with a silk ribbon and see if there's any difference. Stay tuned. Well, here is a good example of the kind of imprint I'm getting with the cotton ribbon on this Royal 10. It's readable. It's nice and dark, but it's just a little messy, especially in the loops of the small letters. So I'm going to push this lever and hold it, and then I can wind up the ribbon onto this left side spool. All right. Jam two key bars together, and I can hopefully get this ribbon unthreaded. Okay. All right. Okay, so my Ribbons Unlimited Silk Ribbon comes in a bag with two spools. I'm just going to temporarily thread the ribbon into the vibrator using the universal spools, not the correct royal spools. And I'll just advance the ribbon by hand as I type just to get an idea of what it looks like. Well, I gotta say, it's nice and dark, but it is not nearly as sloppy as the old cotton ribbon was. It looks better. It looks pretty cool. I'm gonna put this ribbon in. Let's do it. As far as your technique for winding on the ribbons and transferring them from one spool to another, I like Bob Marshall's uh, Speedy Spooler, available through Typewriter Muse. Or you can make your own little homemade version. This version uh, uses uh, two axles so you can spin both of them by hand or chuck them into a drill and make it a little bit quicker. And the third method is to use the unlocking lever for the ribbon advance and uh, go ahead and uh, turn it by hand on the machine itself. And again, if you want to save the plastic spools and reuse them, make sure you cut the ribbon at the hook. Don't try to pull it off the hook, otherwise you'll break the plastic hook. There you go. Okay, I'm going to start the new silk ribbon on the hook of the right hand ribbon spool. So here's the direction arrow for the left hand spool. So the left hand spool wants to turn clockwise, and the right hand spool needs to turn counterclockwise. It's tempting to want to use a hand drill for winding these ribbons, but really it helps to have an electric drill. The Speedy Spooler by Typewriter Muse, Mr. Bob Marshall, and you can operate the drill one-handed while operating this lever here, the other hand to free up the uh, free up the left hand ribbon spindle on the Royal Tan. Left hand spool, right hand spool, ribbon through the guide, like that. Set it to red, lift up two tight bars, and thread the ribbon onto the vibrator. 
I find the silk ribbons are a little trickier to put in because they're so flexible. They're, they're not as stiff as nylon. There we go. To some people, when you're playing with fountain pens and typewriters and other things like that, it might get your fingers kind of dirty. Uh, some people like to wear gloves. I kind of like the idea of getting my hands dirty a little bit. And it helps to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to uh, clean it off. Eh, you know, that's always a good idea. As for my other cotton ribbon that's still almost brand new, I'm going to put it in a double Ziploc bag, mark it, and save it for another typewriter. Right? Why waste it? Well, so here is the uh, cotton ribbon typing, and now this is the silk ribbon. And I did go ahead and clean the type slugs uh, because they were a little messy after all that inkiness from the cotton ribbon. Well, this was an heirloom typewriter, as you've heard before. My Aunt Pat owned it for decades, from the early 1960s, I believe. So the question really is, uh, should you go to the trouble of optimizing your typewriter ribbon imprint. And I think if you want to use your typewriters for practical purposes, uh, it's nice to have a really good dark but not messy imprint, as dark as you can get it without being too sloppy. Well, I think that just helps us as writers and us that people that are kind of equipment focused, you know, we notice these little things. It's just one less distraction, keeping us from being creative if we can get the imprint to be satisfactory. So then we don't have to think about that and we can move on to the job of thinking about writing instead. I don't really think there's much else I can do or I want to do to Aunt Pat's typewriter. It has new rubber parts. Now it has a silk ribbon that gives a really nice dark imprint without being messy. You know, it doesn't have all the decals. They've worn off. The paint is kind of worn off in places. But, you know, to me, in my own philosophy, that's more about showing the patina of age and experience that this typewriter has, has gone through over the decades, since 1933 when it was made. And I like to see that. I like to see evidence of its age. And uh, how about you guys? Are you interested in optimizing your typewriter imprint? Well, we have a selection of various nylon ribbons, silk, and cotton, and your optimal combination you'll have to experiment with. So buy some of each and try them out on different machines and see what works best for you. Well, I think that'll do it for today. I hope you have a great day and stay creative. Be well. Bye-bye for now.